Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and there is a leaked beta of the APK for the Android version of Hear Maps floating around on the interweb. So I had to fire it up on one of my Android phones just to take it for a test drive. Now, an apology to my friends at Samsung. I did not fire this up on my Galaxy S5. I figure you guys will have plenty of legitimate users soon enough. So just to be a snarky butt, I loaded it up on an LG G3 just to see how it might perform on other pieces of Android hardware. And the experience over a day and a half has been pretty smooth. Here Maps performs just how you would think it should, even on the higher resolution screen. This is the QHD screen, capital QHD screen on the LG G3, and it doesn't seem to be uh, lagging too much or slowing uh, slowing down. In fact, for the most part, it's, it's a seamless transition from the Windows phone platform to the Android ecosystem. Now, of course, there are a couple differences in the general layout and UI of Here Maps here on Android. You'll notice we don't have controls down here at the bottom. There is no three dot menu that you're probably accustomed to if you're coming from a Windows phone. We now have a side menu. So if I hit the little bar here on the side, this is where all of our settings are going to be. And this menu can also be activated with a screen swipe from the left hand side. I don't necessarily love that just because if you catch the side of the screen wrong, I like say you're trying to move around in a map, but you're trying to come from the side border here, it's very likely you might trigger this menu option. Uh, that's kind of a nitpicky criticism. I, I do like gesture controls in general, but if you're already giving us a little uh, menu guy right there, that's maybe the more consistently activated experience uh, in my opinion. Now, one update to the Here Maps ecosystem that I really do like is how Maps and Drive are located right here in this menu. On Windows Phone, we still have this notion of these things being separate apps or separate activities. So you see different live tiles for Maps and for Here Drive. And ditto Transit. So if you're using mass transit like uh, subways or metro cars or buses, uh, we now have transit built into the right hand side along with traffic and satellite views. You very quickly toggle between these different aspects of mapping and navigation. And of course, we've got very simple tools to jump into search if we want to search for shopping or food, different points of interest. And we can quickly toggle our bookmarked and favorite locations here in our collections stars icon here in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Plus, considering that it's a beta, Nokia has done a really good job of transferring over even some of the nice pretty stuff like the 3D view from buildings that pop up out of your screen after you zoom in. About the only major UI difference I can find is in how far down the screen will let you slide. So this isometric view still stays more of a bird's eye view than it does on Windows Phone. For example, on Windows Phone, you can make it almost a street level view if you kind of want that boots on the ground feeling for your navigation. All in all, I think Nokia has done a terrific job of moving Here Maps over into the Android ecosystem, and especially taking into consideration some of that Google Maps mentality in redesigning certain elements of the UI. And I can feel some of you folks saying, well, if I'm already on Google Maps, why would I want to play with this? That question can be answered by two settings that I absolutely love on Here Maps. First of all, we have speed limit warnings, and I almost always leave this on on my Nokia devices. Even in Los Angeles, there are plenty of areas that don't have conveniently posted speed limit signs, and you just have no idea what the actual speed limit of that area is, but you just sort of drive along with the flow of traffic. Speed limit warnings give you a subtle little chiming effect whenever you cross the speed limit. It doesn't mean I'm gonna stop speeding, but it does mean that I at least know that I'm speeding. So that's actually pretty helpful. I do like that a lot. But the biggie is going to be downloadable maps. If you do a lot of traveling, or if you're just constantly going through areas where you maybe don't don't have the best uh, cell service or cell connectivity. It kind of doesn't matter if your phone has an LTE radio on it. If you drive through an area which has poor service or has poor coverage, you can download Here Maps directly to your phone. And then if you want, you can use the app completely offline. Never have it ping your data network, never have it work against your data cap. It can all be stored locally. Now, of course, that does come with a little bit of a storage hit. Let's see if we go into download a new map. And let's go into North and Central America. If you want all of North and Central America from Mexico to Canada, it's going to run you seven gig. But let's say we just want Canada. 
Uh, we, my wife and I recently took a trip to Canada for our anniversary. That was only two gigabytes of data, and I used my Lumia Icon and Lumia 1020 extensively while we were being touristy throughout a huge chunk of Canada, and never once did it hit our data limits. We never had to worry about whether or not we had data coverage. It was all just on the device. But let's come down to the United States. The entire USA map package is only 4.7 gig. So you can download the entire United States for 4.7 gig, or if you want, you can download individual states. Say you wanna come visit me in California, it's only gonna be 487 meg. Although I would say the whole country for less than five gig. I mean, that is a decent amount of storage to give up, but that means you never have to ping your data on the go. It's all stored locally. And that's not just streets. Like on Google Maps, when you save an area, it pretty much only keeps the street information. This is all of the points of interest as well. So you can search that information locally on your phone, trying to find a pizzeria, need to find an emergency vet. It's all stored in this map data. So folks, I will leave a link below this video so that you can download this leaked beta too. Of course, it goes without saying that this is a leaked beta. And while my experiences have been really smooth, I haven't had any lockups, I haven't had any crashes, it's actually been a really pleasant and nice experience, even on the LG G3, your mileage may vary. You just have to know that whenever you play with beta software, there is always the potential for something totally funky to happen, and you will, of course, receive no official support. That being said, if you like to tinker, definitely check it out, because I think here maps will be a wonderful addition to the Android ecosystem. I'm really happy to see it here because I'm always a fan of competition. And I think Google Maps has gotten a little complacent with things like downloadable maps. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching my videos, subscribing to my channel, sharing my videos. You guys have been phenomenal in talking up some of my recent videos on social networking sites, and I cannot thank you enough. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.